What is up, Saints? I'm back with another Christian Man Reacts video where if you've been watching, you know the intent of my content is to present good and wholesome entertainment. And whether or not I do, that's up to you. Alright, so we're back at it again and uh, we're rocking the blue hat for the first time in a long time, uh, which means we're going to be looking at some false teaching. And um, it gets kind of hard to, to, to find a lot out there outside of the big name ones. Uh, I'm sure there's numerous false teachers across the country but i'm looking at the big name ones like osteen td jakes uh creflo dollar uh joyce meyer um kenneth copeland people like that and and so once you start benny hinn and we've looked at all of them so then it's like okay where do we expand from beyond there i know there's a whole host more but who are some of the more recognizable names that we can look at and so i was thinking one um that's pretty um uh, predominant right now in society would be Paula White um, just because of her association with President Trump and so I thought it would be uh, prudent um, to take a look at her I've never heard anything this woman's had to say before um, other than a, a little shorts video that I saw uh, people mocking her and um, so I'm going into this completely blind uh, I don't know what she has to say what she has to offer um, right out the gate what I do know is that she's a false teacher how do I know that? Because she's a woman who calls herself a pastor. The scriptures clearly prohibit uh, women from holding the position of a pastor slash teacher. Um, that role uh, belongs to men. That's, that's not a chauvinistic or misogynistic um, ideology that scripture, God has ordained uh, men to have that role. That is their role in the church. Um, the, the woman's role in the church is to be um, submissive to that headship of man. Man has been put in place to lead spiritually. It is the man's job to pastor and to shepherd and to guide and to teach. And um, I think I, it was uh, Pastor John MacArthur who said one of the clearest signs of a, uh, an apostate church or a church that is in open rebellion is they'll have a woman teacher, woman pe preacher. Um, just because, uh, like I say, the scriptures are so clear on that, that a woman is not allowed to teach. She is not allowed to have that headship position. Um, that's, that's scriptural, that's Bible. So the moment a woman elevates herself to the role of pastor teacher, that she would dare to stand in that pulpit and, and proclaim the truths of God and pretend to, to expound or exegete the word of God, she is in rebellion and first Samuel teaches us that rebellion is as of the witch the sin of witchcraft it's just like witchcraft it's it's rebellious nature so it is a sign of rebellion uh, so people like Joyce Meyer or Paula White or, or whatever uh, any church so-called that has a woman pastor is in rebellion to the scriptures and is false you don't need any more information than that that is the 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 a, a blatant in the open sign that they're in rebellion and that they're false um so that's all you need to know and, and so i guess that's why i never really took the time to look into anything that by paula white or joyce meyer or anything because it's like anybody familiar with their scriptures ought to know that that's false right off the gate right out the gate um so um but then i thought you know again i'm, I'm looking for additional false teachers to examine and uh this particular one is, is in society and pop culture she, she's uh, i think president trump's spiritual advisor which lets you kind of know where president trump stands spiritually um so uh you know i thought let, let's give her a listen Let, let's see what she has to say um as always these are always grievous to me i, I don't like doing these ones I, it makes my blood boil to hear false teaching i just i get um righteous indignation righteous anger it's it's not a, a violent evil anger it's an anger that that the name of god is being blasphemed that his 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 commandments and his ordinances are just being ignored it's it's a mockery of god for people to disobey god and so to see it openly and to see it promoted is very um uh frustrating and irritating and grievous um so uh, it's never fun to look at these, but it is it in, in on that hand. But then on the other hand, it is fun to expose them so that we can get some knowledge of why we can call these people false teachers and we can find things that we can point out um, to others and say, look, here's what they said. 
here's what they did. This is what makes them a false teacher. Um, so I guess without uh, further ado, I got the uh, the polar seltzer water, cranberry lime flavor. So we're ready to go. Let's do this. All right. So here we go. This is off of uh, her her own channel, uh, Paula White Ministries, um, and this is uh, titled "The Eight Ways God Talks to Us, Part Eight: Holy Spirit." Um, I went back several years because I wanted. I've, I've, I just assumed that a lot of her recent stuff is probably going to be political based. So I wanted to go back prior to the presidency of Trump and, and see what she was saying back then. Um, just so we can get a, a more rounded um, idea instead of just being so politically focused. Um, and again, that's just my assumption. I assume that she's just teaching a, a, a lot. A lot of her conversations are probably going to have political motives behind them. So I wanted to back up prior to that to see what she had to say. So uh, we got this one from 2014. Um, so uh, we're ready to go. Without further ado, let's give this a listen here. Hi, I'm Paula White, and welcome to this exclusive YouTube video. We're talking about how do you recognize the voice of God, or how does God speak to us? There are eight biblical ways that we find in God's Word that He speaks to man, that He speaks to humanity. The importance of that is that there are three voices. There's man's voice, God's voice. So right out the gate, one of the ways, one of the reasons that women aren't appointed to, to this headship role is because men are very visual. Like, not that's not just to, to justify our lust or to justify our perverseness. That's a scientific, biological fact that that men are stimulated visually. When when we see something beautiful or pleasing, it triggers the endorphins or whatever the chemicals are in the brain that causes pleasure. Uh, which is like an which is why you know lustful sight things for men are so addictive because we get that craving that chemical reaction that craving and we desire it um so a woman especially one who who is 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 attractive and then um dolls herself up in makeup and 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 showing a little bit of cleavage there that's very very distracting for a man um so you can imagine like in a church setting where you're supposed to be focused on the lord and on the word of god and, and you've got this visual in front of you that, that's distracting you. Um, it's why women are told to dress modestly in the scriptures. And, and men are to flee youthful lust and, and to, to guard our eyes. But when it's right in front of you and you're trying to pay attention to the word of God, that makes it very difficult. So, so that's one of the reasons I think that, that God has forbid women from teaching. Just because men are so easily distracted by visual stimulus. God's voice and the enemy's voice. So when I'm making especially lifelong decisions or decisions that impact my destiny or the purpose of God, I don't want to misstep. Um, people say, oh, you're going to always fulfill the will of God. Or If it were just that easy, everyone would know their purpose and the will of God. So we have to press. Hey, we don't necessarily need to know the will of God. Um, it is that easy. All things are going to happen according to the course of God's plan. Um, we try to align ourselves with his will, so we're, we're constantly praying and seeking his will, but his will is going to be done. We just want to do it in obedience. We want his will to be done on earth like it's done in heaven, as it's done in heaven. In heaven, it's done with quick, immediate um, uh, obedience, with, with no grief, with no sorrow. We want that same thing. And, 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 and the main way we get that is through the scriptures. The Lord has revealed his will in his holy scriptures, and so we know what he purposes for our lives. And we know that, that there are no circumstances, there are no coincidences. Everything that occurs in your life is designed by God. It's, it's his will, it's being played out. So we've got to pray. Fasting helps clear the clutter. That helps with knowing the still small voice of God. Um, reading God's word, never will God speak out of alignment with his word. There's certain things, there's safety in the multitude of counsels, spiritual authority, there's a, there's a whole plethora of things that work together. And we've talked about seven different ways so far. Everything from God uses prophets and the gift of prophecy to speak. No, God does not use prophets. There are no modern prophets. Nobody's speaking a word of God that would be adding to the scriptures. The scriptures clearly indicate that they're closed, that everything God has to say is already written. In these last days, he's spoken through his son. His son was the end. Permanence, done. 
and, and, and his apostles. We have the full canon. And the scriptures tell us at least three different times not to add or to take away. So if somebody stands up and says, thus saith the Lord, and they're not quoting scripture, they're adding to scripture, disobeying scripture, therefore they can't be a prophet. We don't have modern day prophets. God will speak through tongues and interpretation. No, he will not. <laughs> There's... There are no modern the the gibberish that people speak in in, in these so called churches um, are it, that's not tongues, tongues in the scriptures means languages, you know and and in the book of Acts when we see the Holy Spirit descend on the day of Pentecost and people spoke in tongues, what what does it say there? It says that everybody heard them in their own language. The tongues that were being sp spoken were like Egyptian and 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 um, Hebrew and Aramaic and 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 Latin or whatever they spoke back then and Greek and all the, it's it actually mentions I think like eight of the languages that's what tongues is is languages known languages uh, the gift of tongues is the ability to speak another language um, like if like if I'm in Mexico and I, I don't speak Spanish and and uh, the spirit moves upon me to speak a word to somebody you know I want to share the gospel with somebody but he speaks Spanish and I don't know how and if miraculously I'm speaking Spanish that's the gift of tongues it's not this gibberish that goes on in the churches that's all nonsensical there's there's no interpretation there can't be an interpretation because nobody knows what the language is um, so it's 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 just a fallacy and, and um, it's nonsense and it causes the lost world to look at Christianity and go, what a bunch of lunatics. It's a gift of his spirit. He speaks in a still, small, quiet voice. Um, that's calmness, meditation. Uh, he does speak through the still, small voice. And, and those who are born again know that it's usually just a prompting, an urgency of movement. Um, an idea to do something and, and it works out smoothly and goes smoothly um, so you know yeah okay that God speaks through an audible voice he speaks through no he does not there is no audible voice I mean God can uh, we're not putting a restriction on that God has done that in the past he spoke to Moses out of the bush um, he spoke from the mountain uh, when when Jesus was baptized. He spoke from heaven when Jesus was on the Mount of Transfiguration. He spoke to, to Peter, James, and John. Um, he spoke to Paul on the road to Damascus. Um, so he does speak audibly um, on occasion. But if, if somebody's saying it, it's, it's, it's not a common thing amongst Christians where you can just rely on that. You have to be, the, the whole reason we're to be cautious about things like this is because we live in a fallen world with demonic entities and our own deceptive heart um, trying to deceive us. The heart is so deceitful, it will masquerade as God. You'll get ideas and thoughts or voices that you think are coming from the Lord, but it's really just your heart. It's your own desires. It's your own wants and cravings misleading you and distracting you. Um, or if there's demonic, if you're hearing an audible voice, that's sketchy, you know, because it's just not common amongst the, the Christian faith. The, the word of God is what we rest on. We get all of our instruction from the word of God. And then in our day-to-day -day lives, we rely on God's sovereign plan and, and just walking in the spirit. Just walking. If we're walking in holiness and obedience, we're going to fulfill the will of God. We're going to do what he wants us to do in life. We're going to do what's right in all situations. And we're going to have an, um, an unction, it's called in the scriptures, like a prompting uh, from the Holy Spirit to move in a certain direction, to make certain decisions. It's not going to be an audible voice. Through angels, he speaks... No, he does not. <laughs> this woman. Oh man, she's uh. Ah. We may the scriptures say that we may minister to angels unaware without knowing it. You might encounter an angel and not know it, um, but the Lord's not coming to us in angels. That's how false teachings start. Uh, Joseph Smith of the Mormon Church thought he got a message from an angel. Uh, Muhammad and, and Islam started because he thought he got a message from an angel. Uh, Paul said that if anybody, an angel from heaven or even an apostle, comes speaking anything other than the word of God, um, they're to be cursed. 
They're not to be relied upon. The word of God is full. We, that's all we need. You don't need an angel to tell you anything. Angels ain't coming and speaking to you. If they are, you need to be super sketched out about them. Through visions and trances. No, no. <laughs> oh, this woman, dude. Um, look, the, the Lord can give you an idea in, 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 of where he wants you to go. He can give you a, a, a vision, like a plan in your heart. Um, what did she just say? Did she say the word trance through trances? That's new age witchcraft. The Lord never puts you in a trance. That that's that's evil. That's demonic. The Lord wants us to be clear headed, sober minded. To be in a trance is to lose all control. It's to lose and one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is temperance, self control. To be in a trance is to give up self control. To give up your mind. That's wicked. He speaks through dreams. And now my absolute favorite way and i think the way that god speaks the most especially as we mature and this is the way that god speaks to me the most when i say the voice of god it is the impression of the holy spirit see the bible declares this that in romans chapter 8 see and this is where i think a lot of people go wrong this is true we get an unction from the spirit to, to move in righteousness, to move in obedience. But it shouldn't be where we get, the most we get is from the Word of God. In the Word of God, we learn how to discern those unctions. We learn how to discern righteousness and goodness and holiness. People who rely on the unction, like I say, because the heart is deceitful. The heart is always manipulating you and always masquerading itself as that unction. Desire can often rise up in you so strong that it overcomes the will of God and, 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 and in a sense it overcomes the 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 that unction and mask and replaces that unction with itself masquerades pretends to be that unction and you think you're getting a word from the Lord you're thinking yes this is what I should do but it's really just your own deceptive heart going after what it craves what it desires um, and also, when you're, if you rely on a, on that, the devil knows how to masquerade as an angel of light. The devil knows how to pretend to be that unction, that movement. That's why you have so many people going off into false teaching, going astray into this whole host of nonsense, uh, because they're relying on on this inner feeling um, that that again, yes, the Holy Spirit does move in us and 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 guide us. But you, the, the deception of your own heart and the deception of the wicked masquerade as that. So you can't just rely on these unctions and feelings and promptings and movements. You have to test everything by the light of the word. What does the word say in this situation? Verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So just like you would have a conversation with your natural father, God has conversations with you through the Holy Spirit. So but you're, you're led by the Spirit. You have a relationship. You are born again. You receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You have access to God to enter to the Holy of Holy by that blood. You understand that you are in relationship with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We live in the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. And so he impresses upon us. The Holy Spirit speaks to us. Now, it's not an audible voice like we've talked. It might not be a dream or, or the other ways we've discussed. It's an impression or what some people might even call intuition, but it's not intuition. That has to do with reasoning in your brain, but it, it feels like that. It's an impression. It's an inner consciousness. Can't you see how dangerous that is? It's so easy to, to, to lapse. And I know this from personal experience. It's so easy to, 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 to go from what you think is the, the unction of the spirit into your own intuition, your own ideas, your own desires, um, or a deceiver. It's, it's, you can't rely on, on, on that. There has to be a subjective external source, which is the word of God. It's our inspiration. And to be inspired means to be in spirit. 
So So you're in spirit and the Holy Spirit is inspiring you. You're flowing with him. He's leading you. He's talking to you. He's revealing to you. He removes the veil. Let's look at some biblical examples. Acts chapter 17, verse 16. Now, while Paul waited for them in Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city holy given to idolatry. So the Holy Spirit begins to stir up his spirit and awaken him and moves him. Acts chapter 18, verse 5. And when Silas and Timothy were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. So Paul knew to move and to begin to testify when he's here that Jesus is Christ. Um, so he, he begins to minister to the Jews, etc. So there's, we have to be careful, too, not to compare ourselves to the apostles. There was a unique and distinct ministry with the apostles. Also, when Paul was pressed in the Spirit, it's it's it, when, when a born-again Christian with the Spirit of God in them sees wickedness, sees idolatry, it's like a pressing. It weighs down and grieves you. And what that that's that's that grief ought to just boil up and turn out into the proclamation of the gospel, which is Paul did. So it's not he's not being led into anything. He's being prompted uh, because of the idolatry, because of, of you know the necessity to defend God's honor, so to speak, that he had to speak, and 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 that occurs. So you know I'm not denying the unction of the spirit I, I i rely on the unction of the holy spirit you know i trust the guidance of the lord but i ha- but i also know the deception of my own heart and so i have to test everything by the word of god i can't just say this is what the lord wants for me this is what i'm going to do um because that could be my deceptive heart um saying this is what i'm going to do and and so i need to rely what does the word of god say about this what is it what what does the written word the subjective external source of truth say about this situation and if it disagrees with my unction then i know my unction is not coming from the spirit because god doesn't contradict his word i'm you know i might want to stop here i mean there was just a whole lot of nonsense i am going to stop here we're going to wrap it up we don't have to watch this whole clip all right, so that was Paula White, and um, you know, it's just again that's why a, a woman is not allowed to be a preacher. Um, the unlearned, the young in the faith, are not allowed to be preachers um, because th- th- these experiential things that we have to learn, we have to come to learn to rely on the scriptures alone, um, and that comes through maturity and and through seeing the error of our own deceptive heart and the deceptive uh, voices of demons and devils that lead us astray. We learn, I can't just trust this uh, desire or motive or, or, or inspiration, this idea, this movement that I think this is what I must do, no matter how strong, no matter how powerful, no matter how sure I am that that's the right thing to do. I can't just rely on that. I have to test everything by the light of the scriptures. Uh, because the scriptures alone are our authority and and God will not lie God will not contradict himself so if if I have a strong and like I say I've experienced this um, at least twice in my life where I know I was absolutely convinced and persuaded that the will of God for me was to move in this direction to do something I was convinced this is the right thing to do this is what god wants this is what god desires for me i i have a prompting it seems clear that this is the way to go and at, in one of those cases i had all the counselors in my life all all the men of god in my life cautioning me saying nah bro you're making a mistake that's wrong the scriptures say something else and i was like no no I, I, you guys just don't understand you don't understand the whole situation i know what the lord's telling me i know i have to move in this direction and because of that i in both situations i was devastated and crushed um spiritually injured worse than i've ever been you know it was the lowest in my life because i i i didn't heed the word of god coming through my counselors who were quoting the scriptures i should have said look the scriptures clearly teach um in opposition to what i think the lord is leading me into therefore i'm wrong regardless of how strong this this desire this inclination this this prompting is i'm wrong 
and and those that are wrapped up in this fluffy charismatic feeling nonsense where it's all about how i feel and what i want and 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 god loves me and it's all good and everything's fluffy and cloudy and wonderful and so i can seek my desires i can seek my fortunes i can seek my health in this life there's not a reliance on the word of god it's a reliance on feeling it's a reliance on that prompting and 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 so again i'm not saying that the spirit doesn't do that because the spirit lives and moves in us those of us who are born again the spirit does prompt us and guide us into situations but he's a still small voice a subtle movement and he never ever contradicts his word it's always going to be in line with his word so the word of god is how we hear god speak the word of god we learn the word of god and let it saturate into us and then it directs our our, our every decision um the principles outlined in the scriptures um so you know again i just you know a lot of just nonsense which typically comes from that camp when you run across these false teachers it's all just this self-driven um comfort based you know prosperity everything's good and 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 great and i get everything i want uh, movement that that whole idea that's just anathema it's it's ridiculous it's it's it is not the scriptures um that we need the, the holy scriptures alone to guide us so anyways uh, that's what i got for you uh joyce meyer or what was this lady's name paula white not joyce meyer uh false teacher so um yeah we'll wrap up there i appreciate you guys watching um as always i love you and we'll talk to you next time